Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving for an exponential system. I know what you're thinking. You got the answer in maybe five seconds, one second, two seconds. I don't know what the world record is, but I'm pretty sure some of you, maybe all of you got the answer. But that's not the point. Let's go ahead and uh, dive into this so we can learn something during the process. Okay, so we have this expression 2 to the x times 3 to the y equals 6 and 3 to the x times 16 to the power y equals 48. So I'm going to take the first equation and write it as 2 to the x times 3 to the y equals 2 times 3. And then I'm kind of putting together the powers of 2 and powers of 3 together. So divide by 2 here on the left and divide by 3 to the y on the right. That gives me 2 to the power x minus 1 equals 3 to the power 1 minus y. If, it doesn't, if this didn't make sense to you, this is basically what I did. Okay? Now, what does this tell you? Hmm, interesting, right? Well, this tells me if x and y are integers and we have the different bases like 2 and 3 that are not relatable, they're not convertible, whatever you want to call this, they're not compatible, right? 2 and 3 are different prime numbers. So the only way this is going to work with integers is if the exponents are both equal to 0, right? Okay, then x minus 1 is equal to 0. This implies x equals 1. y minus 1 minus y equals 0 implies y equals 1. So x and y are both equal to 1. Does that work in the second equation too, right? You can check it out, and it does actually work because 3 times 16 is 48. That's what I meant. Like, as soon as you saw this problem, forget about the x and y. 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 16 is 48. I know that, okay? And you know that too. Hopefully, that's great. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the second equation anyways. So, 3 to the x, and I, so I know some people are going to be mad at me because I said anyways. Because anyways, it still, uh, still can be used. Some people say it has to be anyway, but... Anyways, <laughs> okay, so I, I'll keep using it, uh, just a habit. So I'm going to write it as 2 to the 4 times 3 to the 1, and then put the 3s together, just like before. But let's keep the 2s on the left-hand side, shall we? 2 to the power 4y minus 4 equals 3 to the power 1 minus x. Awesome. Now what did we get? We got something similar. <laughs> yeah, if you look at the expressions, y equals 1, and x equals 1 is going to work because it's going to make both of them equal to 0. So 2 to the power 0 equals 3 to the power 0. No question about it, right? Okay, great, but is that the only solution, right? How can you tell? Well, you can do a bunch of different things. You can um, kind of write uh, one of them in terms of the other, plug it in, so on and so forth. That's kind of painful. Let's just, you know, uh, go with the second method. It's also a little bit painful, but not too bad. So, for my second method, hopefully the first method made sense, by the way. I kind of wrote two equations and noticed that in both cases, x equals 1, y equals 1 works. Okay? Because here we got uh, 4 times y minus 1, which also indicates y equals 1 makes it 0. Make sense? Okay, great. So, let's go ahead and con uh, continue with the second method. So my original equation, or system, one more time, 2 to the x times 3 to the y is 6, and 3 to the x times 16 to the y is 48. Okay, here's how my second method works. And if you said natural log, you got it right. So we're going to natural log both sides of both equations. Let's start with the first one. Let's ln, which is natural log, 2 to the x, 3 to the y, and let's ln 6. When you distribute, like if you have the ln of a product, it means the sum of the lns. So it's kind of like expanding it. You can also condense if you go backwards. And then we get this. And then we have the power property, which tells us you can move the power. This is one of the most important ones, and it's very easy to prove. Uh, it's very helpful. With the definition of log or by substitution, you can easily prove this. Okay? Very important property. And the first property that I used was LNAB equals LNA plus LNB. Of course, we also have the quotient property, which says if you have a quotient, then write it as a difference. Make sense? Those are the three pro properties pretty much that you need to know for logs. But of course, knowing the definition helps, as well as change of base. So just a couple formulas. 
So let's go to move x, x ln 2 plus y ln 3 equals ln 6. I'm going to use this equation later. Let's go ahead and call this equation 1. And then let's go ahead and work on the second equation, this one. I could call this 1 and 2 and then this one 3, but no big deal, right? Let's ln 3 to the x, 16 to the y, and ln 48. And you know, this is going to bug me forever, so I have to change it. Sorry about that. Now let's go ahead and split it up. ln 3 to the x plus ln 16 to the y equals ln 48. And then you can just go ahead and bring the x and y to the front. x ln 3 plus y ln 16 equals ln 48. Obviously, I could also break down the ln 48, but at this point, don't mess with it because we're going to have to write it a few more times. And towards the end, we can actually take care of it. Maybe we're not going to need to do that at all. I don't know. We'll see. So we got two equations, right? This is the first one. This is the second one. And guess what? This is a system. Let's go ahead and rewrite the system. We got x ln 2 plus y ln 3 equals ln 6. And x ln 3 plus y ln 16 equals ln 48. Okay? First equation and second equation. Cool, cool. Now, here's what we're going to do. This is a linear system in x and y, so it can be easily solved by substitution or elimination. But I don't think you need substitution because substitution would be kind of like, I don't know. I don't want to say dumb, but I wouldn't go with it. Elimination is nicer. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply both sides of the first equation by ln 3, like this, everything. And the second equation by negative ln 2. So the point is to get the opposite coefficients for uh, x, uh, x or y. In this case, I find x easier because of the fact that ln 3 and ln 16. So uh, when these are opposite, when you add them, they're going to give you 0, right? Makes sense? So let's go ahead and uh, distribute and then add them up. So we're going to get ln 3 times ln 2 times x plus ln 3 times itself, which is squared times y, equals ln 3 times ln 6. Awesome. And the bottom one is going to give me minus ln 3 times ln 2. Let's just switch them around so these two guys look like opposites. Minus ln 2 times ln 16. I know ln 16 I could have written as 2 to the fourth power, but that's okay. Don't worry about it now. And this is equal to, and by the way, that's a minus sign. Be careful. Um, minus ln 2 times ln 48. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add these equations up x is going to be eliminated, too bad, and we're going to end up with y. Let's go ahead and figure out the coefficient of y so we can solve for it. Since we're subtracting the coefficients, it's going to look like this, okay? I'm going to put the stuff in parentheses so you're not confused. And then this guy is going to give me ln3, ln6, minus ln2, ln48. I could have put these in parentheses too, but I, I just didn't. Anyway, I hope you don't mind. And then eventually we're going to divide, right? So ln3 times ln6 minus ln2 times ln48 divided by ln3 squared minus ln2 times ln16. Okay, remember the answer from the first method? If you don't, don't worry about it. But uh, this should simplify. So here's what we can do. Let's go ahead and replace ln6 with ln3 plus ln2. And then ln48 with ln16 plus ln3, but ln16 is for ln2 plus ln3. I hope you can do that. Divided by ln3 squared minus ln2 multiplied by ln2 to the fourth, which is 4 times ln2. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. ln3 squared times, I mean, plus ln3 times ln2 minus 4 times ln2 squared by distributing this minus ln2 times ln3 divided by ln3 squared minus 4 ln2 squared. Guess what happens? These two cancel out and the bottom and the top are the same. Yay! We got x equals 1 
and y equals 1. But this is just y. Oh, come on. We have to do the same thing for x? No, not really. Because if you plug in y equals 1 into one of these equations, you're going to get the x value. So you don't need, really need to do that. Make sense? But anyways, x, y equals 1 implies x equals 1. So 1 comma 1 is a solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.